Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't know if it's like this for you, but quarantine life has been crazy hectic. <laughs> so I apologize for not pumping out more videos. All right, so this is, um, I am hopefully cross my fingers working on some cool collaborations, but um, this one, I'm all about rainbows right now. So I love this acrylic sign. My favorite color is rainbow. I have the fonts up here. So this is more of a tutorial for just how to do acrylic signs in general, because I'm going to show you how to do it where it is going to be flawless and 100% foolproof for you when you're laying down your vinyl, because I know that that's where the issues are. One is how do I make sure it's straight? And two, how do I eliminate the bubbles or just not have bubbles even to eliminate, right? So I will definitely show you that. But first thing is, now I always, I love mixing two fonts for a project, two, three max. Um, but this one, they're both from Creative Fabrica. Um, I am an affiliate with them, but I love having all their fonts. And I will tell you before, I would say that I loved Cricut Access only, but I don't love the fonts that are available on Cricut Access. What I do like about Creative Fabrica is that um, all your fonts come with commercial use, so personal use and commercial use. So if you start to use their fonts exclusively, which they have so many fonts to choose from, if you do one of their membership programs, which if you do, definitely use the Useless Crafter 30 for 30% 30 off. Um, but what I like is that I don't have to worry about which fonts have commercial use, which don't. I mean, right now I do have a Google document that keeps track of all that, but I think I'm gonna move away from that because if I only exclusively use Creative Fabrica, I don't have to worry about it. That's one thing. Two, um, they have like a cloud font type thing so that you can see all your fonts. You can type in, you know, whatever word it is, and then you can see all your different fonts. So I just like having the ability to not have to keep track of my fonts. So um, I'm still testing it out, but those are my initial thoughts. All right. So I love these two fonts. I like Floristia. I've been using it for um, just any time that I want something to, you know, like a scripty font. And you can see how thin it gets. The little S right here, the tail end of the R. Um, I did reverse weeding on this one, and I feel like that's probably the only way to go. Usually when I use this font is for a big, big wedding sign. So these little thin things, while they are very still very thin and delicate and beautiful, they are not that thin when they're that big. I mean, they still look very thin, but they're totally workable. This one, five by seven, so let's click on this. This whole thing is three inches wide. So it got really, really delicate. And I'll show you when I print it out, look at the S, you can't even see that. I mean, it looks like one little line, you know, like not cutting around it. So, um, but with reverse weeding, I didn't lose anything. So I will show you the sign at the end or hopefully I'll dry by then, but okay. So what you want to do with this is once you upload, so for me, because my favorite color is, is so many letters, I did not want to do it from here. You can do it from here and let me show you what that would look like. So I brought these in because my recording tools are over here. So your text, let's pick Floristia. And there it is. All right, so it's a super cute, I love this text, but all right. Um, so my favorite color is, so we all know Design Space does not connect our letters for us and it looks like you're like, what the heck is this, right? Um, this is a lot of letters to move. So I highly, highly recommend using Font Lab Pad. So just Google Font Lab Pad. Once you go on their website, you give them the, your email, I know, but so many people use it. This is like a legit uh, site. Download their free version. This is the one that I use. Um, it will automatically connect for you. So you go and you open up, you search for your font. So, sorry. <laughs> All right, so here's my font, right? And 
you know, you can pick your font. They're both there. Okay, so then you type my favorite color is right it's so much faster all you do then is you go and you save as and so you're going to be uploading this here just like you would an image any um yeah basically uploading any image um and so that's how i did it now if you truly don't want to i would recommend ungrouping it a lot of people like to decrease the letter space, but the problem with decreasing the letter space is I'll show you right here. This is a really, really good example. Do you see the distance between the I and the T? It is not the same distance as between the O and the R. So when you go to decrease your letter space, once your I or your O and your R all connect, because these are all kind of close similar, similar, similarly, <laughs> um, we will still have a gap between the I and the T because this gap is so much bigger. So in the end, I feel like it's just better to ungroup it and to move it, okay? At the end, what you wanna do is once everything goes in, and I'm gonna change this color just so you can see it, okay? I'm gonna change it to a light color so you can really see what happens. Maybe yellow is better. And not only that, I'm gonna make it bigger so you can really see this. Because a lot of people, they move it close together, so they, they're half the battle, right? But they don't go to weld it. So what will happen is your Cricut will cut the M, it will cut this line, and then it will cut the Y and then the F, they're all separated. So let me show you what that looks like. So let's keep this one and we're going to duplicate it. And I'm gonna make both of these really big so you can really see my point. Okay, so you see the M, it will cut off right here. It will then cut the Y. In fact, it might even cut worse. Let me move the M to the front Yes, so this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna cut this full M, the tail's gonna go into your Y, and then your Y is gonna cut. So while, if you didn't, if we didn't do that, it wouldn't have looked that bad, right? We wouldn't have known until you went to your Cricut mat after it cut, because the way it was showing was it was showing our M in the back. So, sorry, let me send it to the back. This doesn't look that bad, right? You're thinking like, well, okay, yeah, what's Anne worried about? It's just like a little thing. But in actuality, this M, it's going to cut all the way through. What you want to do is you want to grab these two letters and you want to weld it. So do you see now it's one fluid object that it's going to cut all the way around and it's one, it's like, if you do watercolor, for instance, this would all be fluid, right? The Whatever you put in the M is going to blend into the Y. If you were doing watercolors here, it would stay in this M and then your Y would start. That's kind of like my analogy for it. So you just got to be really careful and you remember to do it. I've seen so many people post pictures of like, look at my shirt. And you want to say, hey, good job for doing it. But here are my suggestions, right? So let's try to avoid that mistake. All right. So now that you know, I don't like moving these one by one. And, you know, the other reason why I don't like it is because sometimes the R, I don't know where to put it. Like, is it down here more? Is it up here more? Is it over more? So I do like using, and look, actually, look how it's supposed to look. So I do like using Font Pad Lab. I think that's what it's called. I always get this font lab pad. Um, I like using that because it puts it exactly where the R should go um, and the spacing is correct. All right. So assuming that you did all this and you welded it or you brought it in as an S, as an image, which I did, I'm going to now cut this out. And then you typed in rainbow, right? So rainbow, let's type in rainbow just so that you can see it. So I'm going to change this font to Eiffel. Oops. Let me move my face. Okay. And this is a really cute font too, I think. 
So I did capital R, but I wonder if lowercase r, lowercase r would look different. Okay. All right, so here's rainbow. So then what you want to do is you want to make sure that the um, that the length is the same, right? So pretty much I just did this. And sometimes what I would do too is if I needed, if this was too short, I would unlock it, keep it the same length, but stretch it out if I needed to. So you can kind of work, it depends on your image. If you wanted it to be bigger, I could have done it this way. No one would have known that this is not the way the font should look, as long as it looks okay to you. Um, so you could have done it this way to make it a little bit bigger if you wanted to, but I felt like this size was already good. All right, so now that you have everything, what I would do is um, you can weld this together because there's not that much space in between. You don't have to though. Um, but what I would do is before welding it, I would take all three items and I would go to align and center horizontal, horizontally, because <laughs> you want to make sure everything is centered. And then what you do is you're going to grab all three items or now two items, you're going to duplicate it. We're going to change this to draw. And then what you want to do is this is still a cut square or a rectangle, rectangle. And then you're going to grab these two and you're going to attach it because when you send it to your Cricut machine, you want it to draw exactly where we laid it out on this rectangle and then the and then the Cricut machine will cut your square. If you don't attach it, what will happen is it will draw this somewhere. I don't know where, wherever, wherever Design Space wants to draw it. So you want to make sure that it draws on your rectangle exactly where you want it. So you do that by attaching. Okay, so now this is going to happen. This is just going to be your cut vinyl. So we don't need this. This was just for a visual, um, for us to determine the sizing of it, okay? All right, so now that we have everything, I am going to, give me a second, I'm gonna delete all this other stuff that we had. We don't need that. We don't need this. And we're gonna go to make it. So this first one is a draw and cut. It's going to draw out, my favorite color is rainbow. And this is what it's gonna look like. And why you want this is because this is going to be your background. So here's your acrylic. Here's your cut. And if you lay it like this, now you know where to put your vinyl. You don't have to worry about, did I put rainbow? Did I center it properly? Is it straight? Is it straight to my favorite color? Or did I already mess up my favorite color? And which one do I line it up with? And so you don't have to worry about it being straight. Now, because you don't have to worry about being straight, you can hold your um, transfer tape super taut and you can lay it down and you're not worrying about it. So you're laying, you're lining it up and laying it down. You won't have any bubbles because you're holding it super tight and you're laying it and it's also flat. So when you put it down, I would then take my hand from middle and spread out. So if there are any bubbles or anything, it's gonna be pushed out and you're not gonna have any bubbles. I've done many, many, many acrylic signs and I haven't had any bubble issues. And I've done the really big ones for the weddings. So trust me on this, try it. I swear you're gonna love this method. Okay, so the make, uh, I have the maker, but your Cricut machine is going to draw this out, then it's gonna cut this out. So it's gonna cut exactly the size of your acrylic sign. Then your second sheet is your vinyl. So in this case, I did white, and then I colored my acrylic sign the colors of the rainbow. So all right, um, I hope this was helpful. I love these acrylic signs, and I'd love to see yours. But if this wasn't the project that you want, text. Oh, I always say text me because I'm so used to texting with everybody. Email me, post a comment, tell me what your project is. I would love to help out on your specific project. I know it's really hard to learn design space and um, sometimes you run into issues because your project is obviously different from some, you know, some other video tutorial and you don't know where, how else to go next or what to apply or whatever. Um, I'm here to help. So just let me know and then, uh, yeah. 
I can't wait to see your stuff. So you'll see this on Instagram. If you don't follow me, it's the useless crafter, no spaces. Um, you'll see all, you'll see pictures almost on a daily basis, not under quarantine because it has been crazy town. If you're like me, all you do is cook and clean. <laughs> all right. Thanks guys. Bye.